Good evening. I'm Sir Professor Dr. McStuffy Pants, and I'm here today with a very important PSA. Vampires are real. Me and my colleagues at my league, the Institute of Vampires and Yodeling, better known as the Ivy League, have come to the realization that you, yes, you, watching this, are the problem. You enjoy horror movies and blood and guts, but yet refuse to believe that vampires are real. You believe them to be just a creation of fiction. I'm here to tell you they are very much real and very much a threat to you and your family. Fortunately, my colleagues and I have been working night and day on a forecasting system that will report when and where vampires will be striking, so you can take the necessary precautions to keep yourself, your family, your friends, and your enemies completely safe. On that note, here's Fifi with this week's weather report. Thanks, Doctor! And we're going to have bat sightings here, and there's one here, and here. So all over the place, we're going to have bats. And everywhere else, there's blood everywhere! Back to you. Thank you, Phoebe, for the very astute, intelligent, and I believe very helpful weather report. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming, Garbage Horror, this week featuring Beverly Hills Vamp. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Horror, episode number nine. We're getting swanky this week. We're going to <laughs> Beverly Hills. You know it's going to be classy when it's got Beverly Hills in the title. That's where I want to be. That's where we all want to be, babe. <laughs> So says Weezer. But this movie is Beverly Hills Vamp, a 1989 film from American Independent Productions, uh, directed by one Fred Olin Ray, yes. the uh, same guy who brought us Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. <laughs> you know this is going to be a high-class film. Beverly Hills, Fred Olin Ray. So tell us all about it. <laughs> well, three friends decide that they want to make a movie. So they go out to Hollywood to meet one up with uh, one of their uncles. Mm-hmm. And pitch him a script. And Not a treatment, a script. Right, exactly. <laughs> a whole script. They brought three copies of it and the videotape. But anyway, so they go to see him. He basically tells them to fuck off. And uh, so they leave and they look at the personal ads, decide that they want to get some hookers. Some and lady company. Yeah. Probably That's a nice point. way to say that. And uh, so they go to the, the house, two guys... Stay, one leaves, and then vampires happen, and that's about it. That summarizes the plot pretty well. Then comes the great battle with the undead that has to take place every time there's a vampire movie. Of course. Now, we gotta get this out of the way right off the bat. This movie stars one Eddie Deason. He plays the role of Kyle. He's the lead of the three friends. He's the right. one that leaves because he's got his girlfriend. Right. He, he's, doesn't... he loves his girlfriend, and he wants to be loyal to her, so even though, you know, there's this hot woman with... Sits in his face and he's not mm -hmm. falling for it. He's not falling for it. He is he is immune to their charms. So he mostly, mostly. <laughs> so he leaves and has to go rescue his friends. The big concept there, but Eddie Deason. Look, <laughs> you may know him. You if you even if you don't know the name, if you're a fan of Dexter's Laboratory, you know the voice. Yes, because he played Mandark. Now, if you know Dexter's Lab and you know what I'm talking about, you know how distinctive voice it is. Here's a quick clip of Mandart and Dexter's Lab. Excellent. <laughs> now, here's a clip of Eddie Deason speaking in Beverly Hills Vamp. This guy, he's got two big holes in his neck. He's real pale. He's walking around in a stupor. He looks like all the blood's been drained out of his body. And then we saw him bend over and lap. Blood. It's the same fucking voice. Only this time you get to hear it for a lot longer. You know, you realize there's a reason why Dexter's Lab and the Mandark episodes were only 11 minutes long and not 89-minute uh, masterpieces? No, and there was only one that really featured him talking a lot. Yeah, I mean, he the really words. wasn't the... He was the focal character, but he didn't get a lot of lines. I mean, <laughs> the problem is this. I hate typecasting. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people like to typecast actors. I mean, like, we're Star Trek fans. Right. A lot of people believe that Patrick Stewart is Jean-Luc Picard and nothing else. A lot of people believe that William Shatner is Captain James C. Kirk and nothing else. And that's a terrible shame because one of them is a great actor. Yes. <laughs> and that he deserves a lot better. <laughs> and you know which. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the point is, I don't like typecasting actors because no. that's unfair to them and a lot of them have a lot more to offer. I'm sorry, Eddie. You're Mandark. And yes... <laughs> I know this movie came. This movie came seven years before Dexter's Lab. Right. But we're seeing it in 2011. You're Mandark. That's the end of the story. Mm-hmm. So with that out of the way, talk about something else <laughs> than fucking Mandark. Oh, there's there's not much else with the plot to talk I, I, about. I, I mean, the the pacing in the movies, you know, is atrocious. No. I mean, frankly. The movie seems to drag. I mean, watching this movie twice... Now, for a movie called Beverly Hills Vamp, there's a lot of expectation. In fact, the intro to the movie sets up the expectation for blood, boobs, and more blood. Right. And there's just not a lot of action and a lot of people talking. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of it's Eddie. A lot Eddie. of Mandark. <laughs> a lot of it's Mandark. I'm sorry. That's it. No more Eddie. He is Mandark for the duration yeah. of his review. No Kyle. No Eddie. No, Mandark. He, he's just Mandark. I'm sorry, Eddie. You're a Mandark. But, I mean, there's a lot of it is Mandark talking. And that's quite unfortunate. But, I mean, it's just a lot of speak, a lot of speaking, a lot of talking, not a lot of doing. No. There are, is quite a bit of nudity. It's not a something of, you want to watch a, your, with yeah, your parents. Yeah, but so. it's not as much as other... I mean, this was the 80s. This was yeah, the melding I mean, up there. it's not as much as some of the other movies that's that true. we've seen. But we do want to put that warning out there. Yeah, there are boobies in this movie. Yes. Um, certainly it's, it's not like a lot of the classic 80s horror, though, where they meld those two together no. in not-so-perfect harmony. And in fact, um, IMDb describes this as a comedy and a horror. Yeah. And as a horror, it kind of fails. Yeah. It, it, as a comedy, it works a little bit better. A little bit, at least. I mean, they do throw in a lot of... It's, it's a lot of yeah. jokes in there. It's a right. lot of blink-and-you-miss-it humor. And so if you're not paying attention, it's in that regard, I guess it's kind of like duck soup, but not <laughs> nearly as rapid fire, not nearly as funny. Um, not as well but written. But <laughs> it's, that, it's that same style of Groucho Marx, you know, it's going to whiz right by you if you're right. not watching every second of that film. Mm-hmm. And They um, break the fourth wall a lot yeah, in, they this, break, in this movie. Yeah, and so you've really got to pay attention, which is unfortunate because there are some sections that are so boring you can't help but tune out. Right. And so you, you feel like you miss a lot of jokes. And you prob- I probably did, even on two watch-throughs of this. And it, that's the, I guess that's the real problem with this. There are gem moments in there. Mm-hmm. There are some really great moments. I especially love the uh, character of the producer. <laughs> right. He's a good sleazebag, and he has a lot of great one-liners in there. And But once again, uh, surrounding him, you got Mandark. <laughs> so <laughs> you're tuning it, it out almost instinctively. And when he says something weird, you're like, rewind, rewind, rewind. I want to see that again. <laughs> And it's very frustrating. Right. Um, so do you want to do good, bad, best, worst? Yeah, let's get okay. to it. Uh, I'll start. Uh, good. For me, the aforementioned jokes. Yeah. The cheesy jokes, throwaway awesome. jokes, they were pretty good at times. I mean, the IRS vampire agent, they were good, they were quick, they were clean, they got a good chuckle, and they moved on. They didn't overplay or oversell any of the jokes. They knew how to pepper the movie with them pretty evenly. Right. And they were quick going. So. They were, they were, it was very rapid fire at times, and... It just, it, it was the thing that kept the movie going for me, unfortunately. It wasn't yeah. a plot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually um, really like the one where they're looking for the uh, California beach babes. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> That's a visual gag. And yeah, we can, we can actually funny. show that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, okay. You're, about, yeah. you're good, rather. My apologies. Yeah. My good is Balthazar. Ah, the butler. Yes. He is the butler at the mansion where the ladies are residing. And he's just a very fun gay vampire. Yeah, I gotta say, I, I don't recall another movie with a openly gay vampire. Not quite this open. And it kind of it kind of clashes with Ma, uh, Twilight. Maybe I'm taking, I kid, I kid, <laughs> I kid. No killing, no killing. No hate mail on that one. <laughs> Do not email me for that one, even if okay. it's true. Um, <laughs> no, but Balthazar, uh, they, they throw, they have some of the cheesy jokes with that too. The him right. being put into the closet type thing. Yeah. They have a lot of fun with that too, so it works out pretty well. Spent so long trying to get out of the, the closet. closet. <laughs> he, he's a very over the top, very fun loving right. character in this. So yeah, he, he's definitely one of the, the joys to watch on the screen. Mm-hmm. Okay, the bad. 
A bad. For me, it was Mandark and Molly's relationship. <laughs> Sorry. Molly being his uh, temporarily long distant girlfriend. Right. They she stayed home while he went to California and she's just a nagging person and it's just a bad relationship and she can't yeah. act and yeah. not well written and My problem with Molly bad. is she's playing the role of the jealous girlfriend here who, without much jealousy. Yeah, without much reason to be jealous especially and, and much passion in it. I mean Yeah. I, Long story short, he's calling home and talking about what's going on, and everything he says is, "Are there <laughs> girls involved? Are there this? Are there that? You know, are there boobs anywhere near you? Please, <laughs> please immediately cease and desist with the boobs." It's yeah. and it, it's really she just comes across as a nagging character, and which is funny because she's kind of physically she's kind of an adorable, cute, and she could be like one of those fun characters, yeah. and, but she just the, the 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 role they give her sucks. It does. And I mean, the fact that after hearing that he went to this place with his friends, mm-hmm. she decides to get on a plane and go to California, and they're somewhere from the Midwest. It wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't exactly. exactly small explained. town. Small he town mentioned small Midwest. town. So, so, yeah. You know, all of a sudden she's on a plane and she's yeah. going to get him because she doesn't want him to have more yeah. boobs. Uh, for me, the bad is unfortunately the pacing. The general pacing of this film, it is slow. Not a lot of action. Not a lot of going. A lot of people talking on the phone in this movie. Right. A lot of phone calls. A lot of people sitting around desks talking about stuff. Yeah. Not a lot of doing in this movie. Um, if you like movies where people sit around and discuss things a lot, this is it. Now, mind you, that's how they get the cheesy jokes in or these conversations, right. but it's just not visually interesting and it gets boring. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, I'll take the best first. <laughs> uh, for me, the opening sequence of this film... This film was, um, well, I can't say bookend because I didn't do it on the back end, but <laughs> it was front-ended by a very bizarre sequence of a, vampire or, a secret vampire organization that's right. tracking and monitoring. And you get this professor guy, he's on there, and he's all stuffy talking about vampires and the big book of vampires reading from it mm-hmm. to tell us this story. It is so over-the-top, so cheesy, so forth wally. It's just amusing, and you hate the weather girl in this glory. I, I believe her. I hate Sandra. Sandra, rather. I apologize. It's Sandra. I don't hate her. I just think that she could have done a little bit better with the role. Yeah, she. It, but it was all so gloriously bad and intentionally bad. Well, I think she could have even made it more over the top. Yeah. Okay. That, that's true. She could have done it. She yeah. could have had more. It was more of a straight reading than an over the top. Uh, this is the weather for what the vampires are going to do today. Yeah. There's going to be lots of blood over in LA. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that. Okay. It was more, this is vampires over in LA today. Watch out because it's going to be dark. And you of know? course you have the stuffy professor explaining it all. But yeah. I, I really like that sequence. It did a good job setting the tone for the film Got you in the right mindset for it. And even though the, you know, the pacing and so forth, there were other problems with it, at least it geared you up for the movie quite well. Right. The only, only complaint I have with that sequence, it did go on a little bit longer than it probably should have, but all in all, it was a pretty compelling sequence. Mm-hmm. Best. Okay. My best is there's actually a uh, photo shoot with <laughs> one of the friends and one of the female vampires, and there's not a lot we can show of it, and I'm going to leave it there. How did I know so, <laughs> you were going to go with the boobs? I don't know. There are other good parts about this that just happens to be the scene I was looking forward to. <sighs> Crystal, you're getting predictable on me. Okay, the worst. The worst. And I think that we both agree on this I one. I think we're in this one together. Man, dark. Look. Guys, I'm sorry. The voice is annoying enough, but in Dexter's Lab, it was in small doses. It fit the character. And Mandark, the character, was so over the top, so out there. It all worked. Right. Here, he's playing a more down-earth. He's in front of the camera. He's not as good of an actor. He's I mean, the lead. He's the lead. He doesn't have that camera presence. No, he doesn't. I mean, he comes off as the annoying little... Why they keep pestering you and pestering you and pestering you and pestering you? Exactly. Sir. <laughs> but no, he he's just he's someone that you don't want to spend time with, no. and the fact that he's on camera so much that he plays such a prominent role in this film, you just can't wait for him to get off camera, and he never <laughs> does. It's, it's, right. It's unfortunate because I like I said I love Dexter's Lab, I love Mandark, I love um, 
I, I love him in many, in many ways, but he does not belong in front of the camera. He's a very talented voice actor. That's where I think he should remain. Just saying. Okay. Okay. Who would you recommend this to? I would l recommend it to people who like cheese on top of their cheese. <laughs> the cheesy teas, teas. Exactly. Um, for me, uh, honestly, for people, for the people who like cheese on top of their cheese, I think there are better movies out there than this. I'm gonna say if you're a big, huge Dexter's Lab fan. You want to see a uh, Mandark's voice actor in a different role, see him in a different setting. This is an excellent chance to do it. This is something completely opposite of Dexter's Lab. Right. A, it's not animated, and B, it's definitely not kid friendly. And C, it has nothing to do with the lab. And D, he uh, is playing the hero instead of the villain. That's true. That's uh, so. It's com like Mandark, complete reversal. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in Dexter's Lab, he's also a very confident, very overpowering character. Here, he's very weak, very shy. So yeah, it's complete role reversal for Mandark. So if you would like Dexter's Lab and want to see Mandark completely flipped around, this is a great movie to do it. But other than that, I just don't have much of a recommendation for you. No. So that about wraps it up for me. Got any final thoughts? All right. Well, on that note, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Garbage Horror, episode number nine for Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Hills Fams. <laughs> What stays in Beverly Hill? Oh, fuck it. <laughs>